Hey, good morning, everybody. It's great to be with you all. It's a beautiful, gorgeous morning. All you have to do is look out there and realize how blessed we are as fishermen, as outdoorsmen. I mean, fishing takes you to some of the most beautiful places on the face of the earth, and that's why this is such a great sport. Good morning. Have a cup of coffee. It's time for the morning briefing, and as always, it's my pleasure to be with you all. I got to tell you, yesterday was a really fun day at the Freedman Adventure Studios at 22nd Street Landing in beautiful San Pedro, California. Sergio David made a trip from Italy, and his final destination was 22nd Street Landing, where he arrived, and his very first podcast was Friedman Adventures, and I thank him so very much. It was great to meet Sergio, the translator, Manuela, was a lot of fun. The interview, the podcast went great. Those guys were so much fun. Then we had a banquet with all the guys from Suzuki, and it was so nice to meet Brandon and everybody else from Suzuki. I had such a great time, and that was a memorable experience. I felt like I was in the presence of such greatness yesterday with Sergio. I mean, Amerigo Vespucci or Marco Polo, Christopher Columbus, great Italian explorers. And Sergio was one of them. 10,000 miles, 10,000 miles in an inflatable rigid boat. Incredible. And you can see all of that on that great podcast from yesterday. I hope you'll give that a look. Right after you watch this, you can roll right in to our Island Spirit trip. We were just up there out of Ventura Harbor Sport Fishing on board the Island Spirit, and we had such a great time. Again, just gorgeous up there around Anacap Island. We got to see a massive mola mola. We looked for sea bass and halibut, had good rock fishing, and of course what made the trip was a great crew and wonderful people on board, and you can see that as you roll into it. All right, let's get into the fishing right now. The guys out of Ensenada are still getting some bluefin tuna. Some of that fish is really, most of that fish starting to move up the coast and out to the west a little bit, maybe pointed toward Tanner Bank again. It is really, really interesting to watch the progression of it. Is that the only bunch of fish that we have this year? I highly doubt it. Now that we have such nice weather in a variety of locations, Boats are starting to spread out, and guys are going to start to encounter that bluefin in other areas, and that really is exciting stuff. I'm looking forward to bluefin in multiple areas where you have a shot at that fish, and you can actually catch bluefin and white sea bass and yellowtail on the very same day. Fingers crossed with regard to all of that. San Diego, those guys are continuing to get a little bit better score. Some boats have had really outstanding scores. Other boats, less than a fish per rod. There was a time here recently, and still I would say right now, where they were seeing less fish. Maybe they got off of them for a while, and maybe they're getting back on them. They seem to see quite a bit more life here recently, and it seems like we might be pointed in the right direction. Now there's also a lot of this 18 to, I want to say 40 pound bluefin tuna wandering around. So there's a little bit smaller grade in there, which is still beautiful fish can't deny that and it seems like the bigger fish not always but a lot of that big fish fishing takes place at night knife jigs flat falls akanas all working really really well you don't want to screw around when you're fishing at night you've got to have 80 prefer a hundred pound and also a two-speed reel make sure you are doing that so some of that smaller grade bigger at night you'll run into the big stuff during the daytime also and kelp patty yellowtails strewn all around that zone. That's good. It gives you a little bit of variety, and if you find the right kelp, you can get well in a hurry. So once again, you have to diversify that tackle. You need that fluorocarbon, 30 to 40 pounds, and then you need the big stuff to really make it happen. Grande had 47 yellows recently. Nothing wrong with that kind of a score. Other guys on that local scene uh, running those 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. trips, are seeing more and more bluefin tuna again. Maybe moon phase, maybe we're off them. We'll just have to wait and see if it pops back into gear. In the meantime, those kelp patty yellowtails are filling in nicely. That is really good news. Now, Coronado Islands, not too many guys are looking at that right now, but there has been some yellowtail out there. There's also some decent bottom fishing around the islands. Uh, not anything to completely write home about, but there's enough yellows there where that could really start to 
play an important role in the future. So we're continuing to watch that for you very, very closely. Hopefully that'll get going. Same kind of a tackle recommendation. Uh, I mean, you don't probably need the two-speed reel, and people out there are like, what do you mean you don't need it? The Coronado Islands, you're not going to catch a 200-pound bluefin. I agree with you. However, you just don't know in these crazy years that we're experiencing right now, when you're going to and fro the islands, it's only 11 miles to Pukey Point, but I mean, if you're going to work down to South Kelp Ridge or down the Rock Pile area, you might encounter those bluefin tuna. So again, please pay attention. Bring some heavy if you have it. It's a really good way to go. When you're looking for kelp patties, by the way, whether you're on a sport boat or on your own private boat, it's essential that you get everybody on board working. Maybe everybody taking a different direction, scanning the horizon, working hard. If you can find a kelp, you can get well in a hurry. And it's a numbers game. The more kelps you hit, the better your success. So keep that in mind. The local situation, let's talk about that. Down in San Diego, there's uh, some guys that are catching a few bass down there, but water's still cold up and down the coast. You know, like uh, albacore type cold, like maybe, who knows, that fish, that bluefin moving out to the west a little bit, where normally you encounter albacore. All right, I'm getting off the, the path here. Back to the local scene. If you can get on some structure, fish lead head and squid, you can do pretty well in there at times and by pretty well I mean catch a bass or two at other times it's even a little bit better than that other times it just is a no-go with rockfish filling the sex and that is pretty much the story all the way up the coast we don't see any kind of really big time surface bite going on up and down the coast you know if you get on structure you can pick away at the bass most of the time the boats are fishing for sculpin rockfish that kind of a thing nothing wrong with that especially when you move up a little bit further that channel island area that local rockfish bites pretty darn good you get out to anacap island as we did on the island spirit well you'll be able to see that next so check that out uh once again some pretty good bottom fishing but the smattering of barracuda that we've seen up and down the coast has yet to turn on we're hoping that's going to be here pretty soon and also we're hoping that we'll see some migratory sand bass this year wouldn't that be awesome and with the cooler water and the anchovy around, you just don't know. That could definitely kick into gear. All right, our islands out here. Let's talk Clemente. Let's talk Santa Barbara. Let's talk Nicholas, okay? Those islands have some squid nests on it, and the boys are starting to exploit some of that squid and doing pretty good. The Navagante out of Redondo had a dozen nice halibut up to the 20-pound class or so. They were out also catching copious amounts of sheep's head and rockfish and that kind of thing. Freedom, Tino Valentine, working really hard. Had a flash in the morning of yellows, big yellows. They lost a lot of them. Again, I'll get into the tackle with you here in a moment. They're nice fish, 18 to 30, and sometimes in the high 30 pound mark. I mean, like Guadalupe Island style fish. So they have that going on. There's also halibut around. He didn't get any, and there's a good chance for white sea bass because, you know, those squid nests are just magnets. Fish are going to, predators are going to get on that squid, and when they do, you got a good chance to capitalize with some great fishing. Most of this, all, almost all of it, is dropper loop style fishing, So, but there's also sliding egg sinker fishing. So let's just minimize what you need to bring for tackle. So many times, we walk on the boat and we're prepared for a long range trip when you just need a little bit of tackle. So torpedo sinkers, heavy line, big hooks, 5-0 hooks, I like to fish with, and some sliding eggs, and you're pretty well set. I wouldn't fish that yellowtail at any of those islands I just mentioned with less than 40 pounds. And you can fish it, some guys have been up in the 80 pound fishing it. I mean, when you see the size of the yellows and you're in some structure that rips you up, you're going to want to have some heavy line. You're going to want to put the wood to these things and get them out of that structure and work hard to pump that fish up and get them out of there. And that's the way to do it. Fluorocarbon, yes, of course, we love Opsin Fluorocarbon. www.opsinusa.com. Put in FA at checkout, and you'll get a note from Greg as well as a free gift. And fluorocarbon is an absolute must. Now, guys will tell you, you don't need floral when you're fishing dropper loop. You certainly don't need it when the sun is not up, if you're fishing in the dark. 
Other guys will tell you, hey, what the hell? I'll take any advantage I can get. I'm just going to go with the floral guy. I know, I know it's not necessary. I know we're fishing dropper loop. I, I get all that, but you know, what's it going to hurt? So a lot of guys will go with the floral regardless. I, I would say it's your call. It seems like you really don't need it. But other guys, uh, Brandon Kassar was telling me he was on the boat the other day. I think he was on the Pride, and he said that the dropper loop fish that came on board were on fluoro. So there's some empirical information from Brandon for you all. All right, up there in the Channel Islands, um, they're catching some sea bass and halibut up there. Not copious amounts, but some guys are getting some really good hits. Great halibut year, by the way. It's been really impressive. And up there in the Channel Islands, we're getting a good flash of that. Excellent rock fishing. Boats like the Endeavor, I mean, Tucker McCombs up there out of Ventura Harbor sport fishing, keeps cranking on it. He'll get a shot of halibut and sea bass. Had a great trip just the other day, that two and a half day trip. Wonderful fishing for him. And then copious amounts of rockfish for the overnight boats, the Ranger 85. My buddy Scott Buchard on deck, they're catching halibut, few sea bass, few yellowtail copious amounts of rockfish they'll be back in shortly so we'll continue to monitor it up there the forecast for the weekend i don't know what to tell you i'm hoping it's dead wrong but it looks like it's going to get breezy again up there in the channel islands and again these are forecasts so they change but man oh man what a breezy spring it has been i can't wait to get away from all of this nonsense and you know it's hard to believe it's going to do that with this gorgeous sunrise this beautiful flat calm seas. It really looks gorgeous down here today, but looks like we're heading towards some wind this weekend. We'll be watching that very, very closely. And we're gonna get wind maybe at these local islands, Catalina and other areas. Speaking of Catalina, Bonita, occasional yellowtail, occasional white sea bass, water's still a little cool, water's still a little off color. All of those conditions don't bode well for good, consistent surface fishing. Now you'll get a flash, and get some good fishing in, mixed in with it, some good bonita, a few yellows. I don't think we're too far away from that happening. We can stay away from the wind and conditions, continue to recuperate. We could get some really good fishing at Catalina Island. Boats like the Pursuit and other guys are out there on a regular basis. Definitely wanna have floral carbon when you're fishing that bite over there. Hopefully you'll be able to load up on some whitefish, sheep's head rockfish, that kind of a thing while we wait for the big bite to take off at Catalina Island. Also, here in the surf, well, our next Grunion run is gonna be May 30th, so we've got a little bit of time. I love what is going on in the surf right now, and now is when the stars align. You get sunrise, high tide, you get sunset, high tide. That's what we're looking at for a lot of this week, so these are great days to be in the surf, either in the early morning hours, which I prefer because you have less wind, tendency to blow in the afternoons and screw everything up. Could be really good though. I may be down here this evening. I should be fishing right now, shouldn't I? But of course I have all of you to take care of. Um, I'll probably be down here this evening giving this a look. Those are magical times. When you can get that sunrise, which just seems to be magical anyway, fish feed on that sunrise combined with a high tide, combined with these beautiful seas, combined with a little bit of more warm water here. We're gonna get some solar warming also. That bodes well. And one of the best baits you can fish are sandworms. I highly recommend you watch me rolling around in the sand in the sandworm video I did. If you find sandworms, they are such great bait. They work great. But throwing a crocodile here, throwing a cast master here, a lucky crab lure, also very, very good. When I say here, I'm talking about the Southern California coast. All of these areas now are coming to life with spot fin croaker, yellow fin croaker, corvina in the shallows. And as I point out to you all the time, you look where that wave is breaking right there. Inside of that, there's corvina. And as we move into the summertime, the great thing is you can be out there waiting around making long casts and you'll feel those things bump into your legs. It's really exciting. Hopefully, it's a Corvina bumping into your leg and not a round stingray that will inflict a severe amount of pain into your life. All right, and what else do I have for you? Surf fishing looking much better. And I, as I say, this week looks great. Grunion run for you, Grunion enthusiasts, May 30th, observation only. Also in June, there's new regs. Once you're allowed to take 
Grunion, you'll only be allowed 30 in your possession. Must have a fishing license to do it. And you cannot come down here with anything but your little hands to dig those things up in the surf. All right, uh, if you are interested, we've got a few more spots open on our charters. In fact, we just had two spots open up. They're going to go fast. The Amigo leaving June the 15th out of 22nd Street Landing. We have a two-day trip. And why is June the 15th so important? Because the white sea bass limit goes from one to three. You could literally go home with six sea bass on that trip. That could be really, really exciting stuff. And in addition to that, by that time, we're hoping we got an option to go either bluefin, yellowtail, sea bass. It should be a great trip. Two spots have opened up. If you want them, send me a text ASAP 657 227 6459. You can see our entire charter list on Friedman Adventures on Facebook. Go over there and just scan down and you'll be able to find it. And I hope to see you on a trip really soon. And our Malahini trips, they're also on Friedman Adventures on Facebook. Check that out. You book directly with the Malahini. June, or pardon me, we have a July, August, and September trip. Those are great trips with Captain Bill Wilkerson, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. out of H&M Landing in San Diego. All right. What a fun day that was yesterday. Take a listen and watch that podcast with Sergio. That was so much fun. Again, 10,000 miles the guy traveled. It's an outstanding time that we had together. I thank Sergio. I thank Manuela, the translator. I thank all the great guys from Suzuki. Wow, my voice. I thank all the great guys from Suzuki, Suzuki for such a great time. And, of course, I thank all of you for joining me this morning on the Morning Briefing. Have a great day, my friends. Don't forget, you can roll right in to the Island Spirit video that we shot out of Ventura Harbor Swordfish, and I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you enjoy your day. Take care, my friends.